What's going on guys? Welcome to my basement. Today we are going to be taking a look at my top five post-apocalyptic comics of all time. Stay tuned. <laughs> Starting it off at number five, we have Wasteland. Wasteland, published by Ani Press. You can get the entire series in two compendiums or five hardcovers, as well as trade paperbacks. By Anthony Johnson, this story starts 100 years after a world-ending event called the Big Wet. Now, it starts off with our main character, Michael, who enters a shanty town looking to trade his goods. The world is a dry, infertile, barren wasteland, but there is a lot being offered here. We've got interesting creatures, power-hungry dictators, crazy religious groups, different groups of gangs, certain individuals with powers, awesome supporting characters, an overall interesting world, interesting story arcs, highly recommended, all black and white, not a very long read, a lot of artwork here, very reasonably priced compendiums, not a perfect story, artwork isn't consistent either throughout the series, but definitely worth a read. At number four, we have The Eternaut. <laughs> Considered one of the greats of Argentinian comics comes this awesomely apocalyptic story of a family trying to survive an alien invasion. Written by Hector Germain Osterheld, this originally appeared as weekly installments from 1957 to 1959, which follows our main protagonist Juan Salvo, his friend Professor Favalli, as well as others through a gripping tale of survival and oppression from an alien threat. Some very great ideas in here, unlike anything I've read. A story more about oppression of the human spirit and overcoming tyrants. Published by Fantagraphics, a very awkwardly shaped book, difficult to read, but a must read at that. At number three, we have Rick Reminder's Low. My favorite Rick Reminder story now with Low. I've read this multiple times. Amazing story and artwork. This story is about humankind fleeing the surface of the earth into the bottomless depths of the ocean due to the surface being uninhabitable. The sun is the main cause for this, making the world too damn hot. Now, on the surface, you have a bunch of radiation and strange creatures. The writing style is dark and poetic. With a touch of optimism, it focuses on a family torn apart, trying to reconnect with one another again after a traumatic event and trying to solve a bigger problem overall of how humans will survive in the very near future. This is really, really damn good. A true masterpiece, a sci-fi post-apocalyptic fantasy that I feel I can read over and over again. At number two now, we have Crossed. <laughs> Now we have an extremely mature, blasphemous, gory, disturbingly sexual series unlike anything done before. This crosses the line literally into a world of madness, mayhem, disease, and rape. Here we have a play going around that turns people into mad crazy lunatics with crosses on their face. They want to kill you, they want to eat you, and they want to rape you all at the same time. It is insane. Yes, it's disturbing, but it's also so damn good. What's nice about this series is that each volume follows around a different group of people trying to survive. So many great writers on this series as well, kicking it off with Garth Innes with amazing, consistent art. Go read this, please, if you have not, but you have been warned. 
At my number one spot, you probably guessed it, it is Why the Last Man. Finally, we have a series that brought me back into comics after having been away from it for a while. Written by Brian K. Vaughn. These are the absolute editions of this series, but you can get this in so many different formats. Following our main character, Yorick, the last man alive, with his pet monkey, through a post-apocalyptic world. All the men are dead, only he is alive. He is trying to reconnect with his girlfriend. We get so many great supporting characters in here. Crazy groups of people featuring this group of crazy feminists called the Amazonians who mutilate themselves. The writing is poetic, funny, kind of a tribute to its time. A lot of interesting 90s references that for those of you who grew up in the 90s would definitely appreciate. Culturally, musically, this is a breath of fresh air. Brian K. Vaughn's best work in my opinion. That is all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you think of this list, what your favorite post-apocalyptic stories are. If you haven't read these, let me know if you'll be picking them up and we'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.